Hi everyone, it's Eliana and welcome back. I have another card to share with you today. The first thing that I did was I ran my dies through my Big Shot. And the second thing I did was I printed this PDF from the Write at Home website. I cut out the sunflower that I was planning to work with and I'm lining it up with that negative piece of my um, die. I've lined it up so that I was able to tuck in that corner into the misty. And now I'm taking the first layer and lining it up with the PDF printout. So now that I have it set up, I can make multiples of this card or of this die cut, I should say. And I'm first starting off with paper tray ink, dark chocolate. And then when that layer is done, um, I could re-ink it if I wanted to, and I did want a darker image. And so once that's taken care of, I can move on to the next die cut and I just pop it into place. And once the first layer is done, I could flip my Misty around so that I can do the next layer. And I'm just going to leave everything in its place so that way if I want to make more then everything is all set up. I did use the printout as a guide as to how to line up the next layer. And now I'm able to tuck in that corner piece. And so if I want to make multiples I can just drop it back in there. Okay, normally you would probably just want to take your stamps off, but in this case, I'm just gonna pull out another Misty. So I'm gonna put everything back into the corner, and now I'm going to take the next layer and I'm just going to line that up. I'm using the PDF as a guide. Um, it's got lots of little points where it tells you to match it up. and now I'm able to stamp with the next layer. So the colors that I'm using for the sunflower, uh, I'm using two shades of yellow. One is Simon Says Stamp Sunshine, and the other one is also Simon Says, uh, and it just happens to be sunflower. Now for this layer, uh, this is the green part as shown in the PDF. And for that one, I'm going to use Lawn Fawn's Freshly Cut Grass. And sorry, I get my head in the way, but I'm just trying to line up the little grooves. And once you figure out where the grooves are, it's uh, easier to line up. At first I was having a little bit of trouble, but once I figured it out, uh, it was pretty easy to line up. Now for the background, I'm using um, the watercolor background from Right at Home. And I'm going to be stamping it with Gina K Ocean Mist. And I'm actually gonna make two layers. So what I did was I put down a piece of grid paper and I wanted to use the grid paper because the bottom surface is slick and I don't wanna accidentally smear the ink and I did add a little bit of adhesive to my card base and I lined it up on the bottom quarter uh, of the bottom of the Misty so that I'm able to reposition my second layer. And there was a little bit of goop on my um, stamp and so I went back and tried to fix it. So I'm going to carefully pull up my image or pull up my card base. And what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna flip it around and I'm gonna line it up in exactly the same spot. I'm using the grid lines from my grid paper to line things up and I'm just making sure that the stamp is going to cover the gaps from the background. I'm stamping this again with um, Ocean Mist
And so there's a little bit of a low spot right there on the stamp. And so just because the lid of the Misty is flexible, it allows you to push down in just the right spot. Now I'm going to take another layer and I'm just removing a little bit of the sticky and I'm going to line it up in exactly the same spot. I'm using the grid lines. Now I'm using Alta New Sea Glass ink for this layer. And I'm going to do exactly the same thing. I'm just going to stamp it. And then what I'll do is I'll rotate my paper. And I want to do it in this manner. That way when I go to die cut the center, everything will line up perfectly. And so I'm using those grid lines to line everything back up. And I'm just pressing down on the Misty. The lid has got a little bit of flexibility to it. So that allows you to push down in any areas where um, there may be a low spot on your stamp. So now that I have two exact pieces, I'm going to layer, layer them together. And I'm going to use this pretty pink posh scalloped oval frame. I'm going to run it through my Big Shot. I actually completed, I went back and as I was assembling my card, I did not realize that my camera turned off. And so I actually had to go back and um, redo my background. And so the part where I had adhered some stick it tape to both sides of this piece of foam, um, I didn't redo that part. So I do have a piece of foam and it has stick it adhesive on both sides. And so I cut out this frame. This frame is from Pretty Pink Posh and it's the scalloped oval frame. And I'm just going to set that aside until I do my sentiment. And for this card, um, I'm doing a happy birthday. And you'll notice that my picture was actually, it actually said thank you. And that's because I had to redo parts of my card. And so that's just the one I ended up photographing. What I did was I took the watercolor background. I took the lighter piece and I lined it up on my card base. And then what I'm doing is I'm taking the frame and I'm matching it up so that it is in the correct spot. Now I'm going to take the center of the darker one, the one that was stamped with the Gina K Ocean Mist, and I'm lining it up so now all of the pieces coordinate. I'm going to take that piece of foam. I'm going to add a piece of cardstock to the top of it, and it's a piece of cardstock that I have cut out with the same frame. And I find that it's much easier to line things up um, with the cardstock frame first. And there is a top and bottom to the scallop frame. The one side is a little bit narrower than the other. And so I'm just making sure that I'm lining everything up. And by doing it this way, I'm able to line up all the scallops with the foam. And once I get it all together, I'm just going to drop it into my... Um, gap that's on my card base. I did forget to leave a little space there for the flower stem and so I just pulled it up a little bit. Now I'm taking the inside, um, I had a little piece of foam that was the inside of the frame so I just cut that apart so I could use that on my card and I'm trying to position this flower so that a particular leaf is down at the bottom so it'll frame my sentiment. So now I'm just going to go ahead and add that to my card and before I push it down all the way I'm going to add my um, stem. That way I could go ahead and add some foam to the tip and I'm just going to add a little bit of that to the back of the stem and then the bottom of the stem will be underneath the frame. And I didn't stick that hard enough. And I'll just tuck it down. 
now I'm able to press everything in place. Now for the leaf, I didn't show the leaf, but um, I stamped it the same way for, with the layers. And I'm just going to tuck that in. And for the other leaf, I want it to have a little bit of dimension. And so I'm only going to put the foam on the tip. And then I'll press it down. Now this card get, uh, got the thank you. I know you saw me stamp the happy birthday earlier, but um, this is the part where I had to start over or <laughs> had to refilm it. So I'm just taking a little bit of foam and I'm just placing it right where the label is going to go. And this label is from Mama Elephant. It's the labeled messages. And so I'm just adding a little bit right there. And I stamped that in the same chocolate, dark chocolate ink. I'm going to add a little bit of Wink Estella to my flower. At first I only did the center, but then I went back and I colored the whole thing. And now I'm going to use my glossy accents to add a couple of drops. If you have some um, Nouveau drops, you can use that, or you could use your raindrops. But the glossy accents will dry clear and it'll look like little water drops. So here's the other card that I made. I did make several of these. Thanks so much for watching. And if you liked this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Have a great day. Bye.